Okay, so this is a video to help those of you who are prosecuting Charles and trying to prove that he was guilty and deserves to be executed or certainly deserves to be punished um, at the end of the Civil War. Now, um, I'll get right into it. One of the first things that you may want to argue is um, that in the Civil War, many people were killed, obviously. Now, uh, should Charles be held responsible for all of these deaths? You might want to argue that, you know, he's responsible or certainly partly responsible for starting the war. So therefore, everyone who's died in the Civil War, uh, their blood is on his hands. Um, you might want to argue that. Up to you. Uh, another thing that Charles did that we know um, really angered people before the Civil War was um, when he taxed the uh, coastal counties, uh, ship money or ship tax, uh, which was illegal given that England at the time wasn't at war and wasn't really under threat of invasion. That was the only time where this tax should have been collected. Um, and Charles, as we know, did collect that tax when um, when he shouldn't have done it. It was illegal. Uh, remember as well, you're, you'll hopefully remember this from year seven when we did the Magna Carta, the part of the Magna Carta, the rules that kings and queens have to follow, the Magna Carta says that the king or queen um, is not allowed to raise taxes without first consulting with Parliament. Now, Charles doesn't do this. He just raises ship tax all by himself, um, doesn't consult with Parliament at all. So therefore, that's another reason why it's illegal and it shouldn't have happened. Uh, remember as well that Charles ruled for 11 years without Parliament. 11 years with no parliament whatsoever, Charles ruled all by himself. Uh, it's called the 11 years tyranny. So Charles rules as a tyrant, someone who um, has ultimate power uh, for 11 years, no parliament whatsoever. He said he didn't need to rule with, with parliament. He said, I don't need a parliament because of the divine right of kings. Hopefully most of you or all of you should remember that, the idea that God had given him the role of king uh, and therefore any decision that he made was almost you know pre-approved by God. God has made me king, therefore everything I do, um, you know, God is okay with that. Uh, because of this divine right of kings, Charles basically thought he could do whatever he wanted. Um, for the reason that I've just explained there. Um, he also started the war with Scotland uh, by forcing the Scots to accept his new prayer book, and they didn't, and as we know, they invaded. Now, this war was really expensive. Wars, by their very nature, are expensive. It costs a lot of money to get your army together, to get them equipped properly, to feed them, to move them, etc. It was very expensive, and... Um, we know as well that he tried to, that he had to, sorry, uh, pay the Scottish forces to to go away. He had to pay them to go home, uh, which also cost a huge amount of money. So it was a costly war, and then to end the war, it also cost a great deal of money, um, which is another reason why Parliament weren't particularly happy with him. Um, also, in terms of money, you'll remember um, from our previous lessons that Charles wasn't particularly good at looking after his money. Um, he spent a huge amount of money on himself, on banquets, on fine clothes, fine wine, paintings, etc. And um, because of this very extravagant lifestyle, um, he kept having to ask Parliament for money. Um, so that's something else that can kind of mark him out as, you know, not being the best king and maybe someone who deserves punishment for, for being a bad king. Um, finally, there's the issue of religion, the big issue where um, England, of course, was Protestant and um, the people in England, the Protestants in England anyway, uh, really started to worry that Charles was kind of turning the country towards uh, Catholicism to making it um, a Catholic country again. Remember that a lot of people, particularly people in Parliament at the time, a lot of them were Puritans, kind of the really, really strict Protestants. Um, so any kind of Catholic ideas are really not something that they like and are, are happy about. Uh, remember that Charles had married the French Catholic, he'd married, married the French Catholic princess Henrietta Maria, uh, and again, that had really upset the Protestants and the Puritans especially because um, by marrying a Catholic, it indicated, rightly or wrongly, it indicated that Charles um, was kind of pro-Catholic or certainly sympathised with Catholics. Um, the Protestants and Puritans also really worried that um, Henrietta Maria's influence would um, not only influence Charles to introduce more Catholic ideas, which he did, remember, like decorated churches and things like that, um, not only would it influence Charles, but also obviously they would have children, which they did, Charles and Henrietta Maria had several children, um, and that these children would be raised Catholic because they'd be raised by their mother. So that was also a worry, you know, obviously the future kings and queens of England, the children of Charles I, are potentially going to be 
um, you know, raised Catholic by their Catholic mother, and that was a big concern for the people of England. Um, so there's just you know five minutes worth of reasons why people were certainly angry with Charles, and reasons why he, um, why they may have wanted to punish him um, at the end of the Civil War. So some ideas for you to put together in your case to try and get Charles uh, punished at the end of the Civil War. Um, so have another watch through this video if you need to. Again, look through your books. There's plenty more ideas in there about why Charles was particularly unpopular and why people may have wanted to punish him. Uh, and we'll work through this over our next couple of lessons when we put King Charles I on trial. Thank you.